Jesus tongue twister. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. Did you follow that? Did you follow that though? Whoever welcomes you, who is you? The disciples, specifically here, remember? This is Matthew chapter 10. It's Jesus commissioning and sending the disciples out into the world. We won't get into what He does after he, after this chapter ends. I, I invite you all to go home and read Matthew 11, verse 1, to see what Jesus does in the Gospel of Matthew after He commissions and sends the disciples out. Um, but all through all of chapter 10, we've talked about it for the past... What, two weeks now, right? Remember last week's, how no one is worthy of me unless they hate mother and father? Brother and sister, you're not worthy of me unless you take up your cross and follow me, right? And now Jesus says to them, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me, which is Jesus. And whoever welcomes Jesus, welcomes the one who sent him, which is The Father. Right, okay, so. Whoever welcomes the disciples welcomes Jesus and they welcome God the Father. Okay, that's easy. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. So who's a prophet? And what's the prophet's reward? Bless you. And whoever receives a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. So, and who's a righteous person? And what's the reward of the righteous? I Don't look at me. I don't know the answers here. Right? Who's, who could be a prophet, though? Yes. <laughs> who else? <laughs> Jesus could be a prophet. So whoever welcomes Jesus receives the reward of a prophet. Who else could be a prophet? Any of us. us. Right. Anybody could be a prophet when you speak about something that's going to happen, right? The prophets just told of what, who God was and what God was doing in the world and people didn't want to listen to him, right? There's stories about how prophets were, were, every time that they came into the area were talked about how they, like last week's reading of Jeremiah, right? Jeremiah was not a very, um, welcomed person in his lifetime because he was sent to send a message about what God was doing and nobody wanted to listen to that. So is a prophet's reward rejection? Could be. Maybe not. And who is a righteous person? Again, all of us could be, right? It's so what is this? What is the ending of this chapter about? What is Jesus trying to tell us here with this tongue twister of whoever welcomes the disciples welcomes me and welcomes the Father, and that the, and the, those who welcome them, right, will get the reward, who, right? Read that again and see who's getting that reward. Who gets the reward? Do the disciples get the reward? They get welcomed, but they don't receive the reward. The person who receives them, the person who receives the prophet and welcomes the prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward. And the person who welcomes a righteous person and receives a righteous person will receive the righteous's reward. Right? And whoever welcomes and whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the littlest in Littlest ones in the name of a disciple. Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their... Even giving a cup of water to a little one in the name of a disciple, not God or Jesus, will not lose their reward. Even a cup of cold water Water. Sounds like an easy thing to do, right? How many of you can easily give a cup of cold water to anyone who stops by your house when they, whenever they stop by? 
All of you should, I hope all of you should be able to raise your hands here this morning, right? Because you go to that little magic thing by that, by that tub and you pull it up. Or you turn a knob, right? And water comes out. Think about it for a moment, though. When Jesus said this. And where did he say this? Right? We take this even a cup of cold water for granted because it's such an easy thing. Because Jesus says even, right? And even means what? Here in this sense. Because I looked up even and the dictionary response for the word even is way long. So in this sense as an adverb, the least you could do. The least you could do. Or it's so simple that anyone could do it, Right? This is so easy that anybody could give a cup of cold water to a person. Well, if this visitor came when Jesus is talking here to his disciples, if the disciples go or this visitor comes and whoever's welcoming this person comes, say, at high noon. For us, it's easy. You go in, you, you get a cup out of the cupboard, you put it underneath the faucet, you flip it up, you give them cold water. You may even go to that little magic box and pull out some frozen water and put it in there and make it even colder for them, Right? But now when Jesus said this, he said it where? What was the climate of the area that he was in? Hot. Dry. dry. And what year was it? We, we actually don't know, but a good guess would be uh, probably somewhere between 30 and 33. Unless you take the thing that Jesus was actually born in 5 BC, then it'd be about 25 to 28 AD. So... <laughs> Did they have refrigeration at that time? No. Did they have magic faucets that you could go and turn on and get water out of? No. Where did they get cold water from? The well. Right. The well was cold water. Or colder than normal water, right? It's not like ice cold like we know cold, but it was still colder. But if the visitor comes at noon, when did they go to get their water? Early in the morning. So by noon, their water, has, even if it's sitting in the shade in buckets, has done what? It's warm. So to give somebody a cup of cold water, what do you have to do? You've got to walk back to the well with a bucket. And you've got to draw water from the well and then walk back to town. So it's even a cup of cold water is not necessarily the simplest thing to do. But it's something that's easy enough for anybody to do. To welcome the little ones in the name of a disciple. But still, what does all of that mean to us? Because remember, this is Matthew chapter 10. It's the great commission sending of the disciples, right? Jesus is telling, pulling the twelve together and telling them all the things they're going to have to do and all the places they're going to have to go. And he sends them out to share God's love with everybody. And then he ends with, whoever welcomes you welcomes me and welcomes the Father. And even... A cup of cold water will not let one of these people lose their reward. Who is receiving that cup of cold water? The little ones. And who are the little ones? They're not the children. They're not us. Well, they are us, but <laughs> not quite yet. <laughs> it's us, but a little bit removed. Kind of. Specifically in here, when Jesus is saying this, he's speaking to who? Disciples. The disciples. The disciples are the little ones. The disciples are the ones who are being welcomed as prophets, are being welcomed as righteous people, are being offered a cup of cold water. So what does this mean to us? How many of us can do what God is calling us to do on our own? Good, you got it. How many of us can do what God is calling us to do on our own? None of us. How many of us need help? And how easy is it for us to take that help? Right? 
Hospitality is about going both ways and understanding that we're not in this alone and that there are people out there that God has put there to help you along your journey to do the things that God has called you to do. So accept those even cold cups of water along the way as they come to you. And be prepared and open for what God has in store for everything around us as we go out into the world. Because God has called and claimed each and every one of us and is sending us out into the world. And has people there waiting to help us along our paths. So that even that cold cup of water will help to keep us going. And help us to go further to share God's love with the world. So remember that we don't do this trip alone. That God is always with us. And there are others out there ready to help you along your journey. So be open and accepting and ready to take what God is going to give you.